now i am going to give you the basic idea about how the tcp ip header tracing is done in wireshark so here for the ipv4 that is internet protocol version 4 for this we have the source address 13.107.21.200 and destination address is 10.10.13.200 so here is so now we have to compare this tracing with the IP header uh, that is IPv4 that is of 32 bits so it is a version of 4 bits that is version 4 header length that is 4 bits here header length and here the type of service that TOS in IPv4 header is having the known as differentiated service code point in Wireshark so usually set to zero but may indicate particularly the quality of service need from the network and the DHCP that is differentiated service code point defines the way the routers should queue packets while they are waiting to be forwarded so it's of 8 bits we have seen here so now the total length that is the header and the data combined is the size of datagram here is 40 so it is of 16 bits so now the fifth one is the identification so 16 bit number together with the source address uniquely identifies this packet used during reassembly of fragmented datagrams so sixth one is flag so now there is a sequence of three flags that is one of the four bit is unused we can see that is reserved bit don't fragment and more fragment so used to control whether routers allowed to fragment a packet that is don't forget that is df flag so and to indicate the parts of a packet the receiver now the seventh field is the fragment offset that is fragment offset a byte count from the start of the original sent packet said by any router which performs ip router fragmentation now the eighth field is time to leave that is the number of hopes links and which from the packet may be routed over decremented by most routers used to prevent accidental routing this protocol it is also called service access point sap which indicates the type of transport packet being carried for different protocols the number is different for icmp it is 1 for igmp it is 2 for tcp it is 6 for udp it is 70 so for tcp here it is 6 the with the source address uniquely identifies this packet used during reassembly of fragmented datagrams so sixth one is flag now there is a sequence of three flags that is one of the four bit is unused we can see that is reserved bit don't fragment and more fragment so used to control whether routers allowed to fragment a packet that is don't forget that is df flag so and to indicate the parts of a packet the receiver now the seventh field is the fragment offset that is fragment offset a byte count from the start of the original sent packet said by any router which performs ip router fragmentation now the eighth field is time to leave that is the number of hopes links and which from the packet may be routed over decremented by most routers used to prevent accidental routing now here the tenth field is the header checksum so what is header checksum it is a once complement checksum inserted by the sender and updated whenever the packet header is modified by a router so it is used to detect processing errors introduced into the packet inside a router or a bridge where the packet is not protected by link layer cyclic redundancy check that is crc and the packets with an invalid checksum are discarded by all nodes in an ip network 
so we can see here the firstly validation is disabled for the header checksum and the header checksum status is unverified later on now the remaining fields are the source address and destination and source address that is the original sender of the packet we have here 10.10.13.200 and the destination address that is of 32 bits that is the final destination of the packet now we will see the transmission control protocol header tracing here so this is the transmission control protocol header so first field that is the source port number for our the source port is 59980 and the destination port is 443 so source port is of 2 bytes and destination port is also of 2 bytes here now the third field in this is sequence number of 32 bits it has a dual role if the and flag is set 1 then this is the initial sequence number and if the syn flag is clear 0 then this is the accumulated sequence number of the first data byte of this packet for the current session now the fourth field is the acknowledgement number of 4 bytes so what is it if the ack flag is set then the value of the field is the next sequence number that the receiver is expecting this acknowledges receipt of all prior bytes the first ack sent by each and acknowledged in the order ends initial sequence number itself but no data now the fifth field is the header length that is data offset it specifies the tcp header in the 32 bit words so the minimum size header is 5 words and the maximum is 15 words thus giving the minimum size of 20 bytes and maximum of 60 bytes to this header length so here we have the 20 bytes that and the seventh field in this tcp header is the flags so there are nine flags here so ns cwr ec ec ece urd that is urgent ack acknowledgement psh push function rst reset the connection sin that is synchronized sequence numbers fin that is no more data from the sender these are the nine flags for the nine bits we reserved it now what is ns that is nouns that is ecn that is eco indicates nouns concealment protection that is added to header by rfc 3540 so after that cwr that is for the reserved one bit that is congestion window reduce flag is set by the sending host to the indicate that it received by a tcp segment after that the ece that is eco indicates if the sin flag is set to one that the tcp peer that ece and it enable capable of that so after that sin flag is clear that is zero that a packet with congestion experience flag in ip header set is received during normal transmission after that the urgent flag that is what we reserved for it is one bit indicates that the urgent pointer field in this significant after that the sck flag for indicates the acknowledgement field is significant that is all packets after the initial sin packet sent by the client should have this flag set after that pss is push function also push the buffer data to the receiving application after that the reset the connection that is we reserve one bit sin flag that is synchronized sequence number only the first packet sent from each end should have this flag set some other flags change meaning based on this flag and some are only valid for when it is set and others when it is clear after that fin that is no more data from sender that is finish after that the edge field of the tcp header is window size that is of 16 bits the size of the receive window which specifies the number of bytes beyond the sequence number in the acknowledgement field for that window size is 1020 and that the sender of this segment is currently willing to receive this size so 
after that the line field header is a checksum it is also of 16 bits it is the 16 bit checksum field is used for error checking of the header and the data so we can see in here the checksum firstly is unverified and after the checksum status is unverified so after this the urgent pointer that is the 10th field of this TCP header it also of 16 bits and if the urgent flag is set then this 16 bit field is an offset from the sequence number pv4 and tcp header tracing in wireshark and what are the fields that change and how they change and ultimately the capturing of packet was done